adding and subtracting with scientific notation or numbers in scientific notation. All right, let's first talk about adding and subtracting and how this works. All right, here we go. I got a $1 bill and a $10 bill. So let's say I'm adding these together. All right, if somebody gave me a $1 bill and a $10 bill, I wouldn't look at those and say, ooh, I have $2. I also would look at it and say, ooh, I have $20. Because these aren't worth the same, right? Each of these is worth different than the other one. So if I were to to um, to put them together, I would need to do one of two things. I would either need to talk about both of them as like I could look at a one dollar bill and say how many, uh, how much is a one dollar bill? How much is this worth of a ten dollar bill, right? Or I could say a ten dollar bill is worth how many of these? Okay. So in this case, it's oftentimes easier to talk about it from the lower perspective, right? So like one, right? If I have a, a ten dollar bill and I want to turn it into ones, that would be equal to ten of these, right? It'd be ten one dollar bills. All right. In fact, I could actually make ten one dollar bills if I wanted to. So we do that. Now I have four. Now I have eight. Let's just get two more. All right. So now I have ten. Ten of those, right? Nice stack of them. All right. And then I have my one here. And together I would have. 11 of these, right? So all together I would have 11 $1 bills, okay? Now it gets a little more confusing if I try to say, okay, well, a $1 bill, this would be equal to, it's a worth only part of a $10 bill, right? So I'm not really gonna deal with that right now because uh, we can talk about that in class if you want to. Um, but, the, but what I really wanna talk about is that these are not worth the same, and so in order to be able to add them, I need to have the same values. Okay, so let's talk about if I'm adding two numbers like this. What values are worth the same as each other? Okay, and so what I'm going to do here is I need to look at this and say, okay, if I'm going to be adding these numbers together, then I need to align the values. Okay, so I need to say, okay, with this, if this is 100, if this one is 100, I need to add it to a number over here that's also worth 100. Okay, so if I were to write these numbers, Okay, I see some students do this sometimes, and you want to be make sure that this is not what you do. You can't just line it up on the left, 2.37. Okay, I can't just line it up because what I, what you'd be doing there would be like adding the 10 and the 1 together, right? The the $10 bill and the 1. This is worth 100. This 2 is not worth 100. Okay, this is not worth 100. So I'm not. I can't do that. Um, another thing I see students do a lot of is they'll line it up like this. In fact, let's just use these numbers here. I'm going to grab this one. And what I'll do is they will line it up this way, right? They'll say, okay, I'm going to line everything up on the right side. Well, you run into the same problem again. This 2 and this 3 are worth different values, okay? This 3 is in the tens place. This is actually worth 30. This 2 is only worth ones, okay? So this is where that the idea of the decimal comes in, okay? The decimal is sort of the uniter here. It's going to combine these things and allow us to line up all our different place values. I'm sure when you were in grade school, you did these things where you probably had to draw in like little lines across to like line up, make sure your place values all go up. And you thought your teacher was being very annoying and you had to be too meticulous. But really what we're doing is you're trying to be very precise with your numbers and make sure that you keep everything of equal value together, okay? Well, when you do this, right, you're just going to add up the values. So you can actually fill in placeholders. So 2.37, well, how many tens are in this number? Well, there's zero there, and how many place values? There's zero here, and then I'm going to look up here for hundredths, and or, yeah, hundredths, I'm going to say, well, there is zero here, okay? And if I'm going to add these together, then I can just straight add, okay? Well, how many hundredths are there together? There's zero and seven, that would give me seven hundredths. And then how many tenths are there? There's four here, and there are three here. So that gives me seven tenths. Okay, and I'm going to put my decimal in, and then I'm going to look at ones. Well, how many ones are there? I have one and two. That makes three ones, and then I have three tens and one hundred, and so I'm left with one hundred thirty-three point seven seven, or seventy-seven hundredths. 
Okay, so that's the idea. So the, when we use scientific notation, we're going to do the same thing. Okay, but what happens here is these numbers are not lining up because the place values are not exactly the same. So this first number is 7.2 times 10 to the fourth. Okay, that's saying that the seven is worth this amount. All right, this number is saying 5.1 times 10 to the fifth. That's right. These numbers are not lining up, right? This five is worth 10 to the fifth. So I can't just do this. I can't just say 7.2 times 10 to the fourth and just say add 5.1 times 10 to the fifth. I can't just do this because even though these decimals look like they're lining up, this five and this seven are not of equal value, okay? This seven is this. This five is here. So what we need to do is we need to create these numbers, we either need to line them up correctly, okay, um, or we need to make sure that their place values match with the decimals. Okay. So two ways you can do that. One, you can just write it in standard form and add them up. But there's going to be a lot of zeros in that, and that's not very mathematical. So let's write it from the smallest place value. Remember when I said that earlier with the ones? You can write it from the smallest place value. So let's do that. Let's try writing it from what's smaller here, 10 to the fourth or 10 to the fifth. So let's say, okay, well, let's do it from seven to 10 to the fourth. So that's gonna be 7.2 times 10 to the fourth. Well, this one is 5.1 times 10 to the fifth, right? So 5.1 times 10 to the fifth. But I wanna write this number as something times 10 to the fourth, okay? well. This here is that place value. So this is 10 to the fifth. So this one would be 10 to the fourth. And if I look here, what I'm having is I don't have 5.1, I have 51. Okay, let me move this down a little bit. Whoops. Yeah, this is going to be 51 times 10 to the fourth. All right, because I'm describing it, I want to know from this place value, how many are there? Well, this is too big, so I'm going to look here. This is the same. I have 51 times 10 to the fourth. Well, now what I can do is I can line it up, and I get 51.0. I'm going to just put in a placeholder times 10 to the fourth. Now these line up. Now I can think of this as a unit, okay? My units are the same, just like when I did my dollar bills. I converted the, ten, the tens into ones, okay? And then... The, the, the bills are the same. So here I'm talking about 10 to the fourth because I'm adding. I'm not multiplying here. And then I'm going to add. 2 plus 0 is 2. 7 plus 1 is 8. And then 5 plus there's a 0 here, right? And it's going to be 5. So I get 58.2 times 10 to the fourth which is fantastic, except this number is not written in scientific notation. So now I'm going to have to convert it. So I'm going to have to say, all right, well, this is 10 to the fourth. This one is 10 to the fifth. So I'm going to say this is actually 5.82 times 10 to the fifth. All right, so that's one way of doing it. Now, on this next example, OK, in fact, let's go to this next example. I'm going to try writing it from the smaller pl or the larger place value, OK? Because the, on this last one, I ended up having to convert it. I ended up having to, all right, my number got a little too big, and I had to change it again. So let's see if we can do it so that we don't have to change it again. All right, so let's do this. Let's try writing it from the larger one, OK? So this is 9.21 times 10 to the negative 6th. So let's write this number. Instead of it being to the negative 8, let's write it to the negative 6th. OK, so I've got 8.01 right, times 10 to the negative 8th. This is 10 to the negative 8th. This is 10 to the negative 9th. So that means that zero, I'm going to have to put a couple of zeros in here, that this is 10 to the negative 7, and this is 10 to the negative 6. So if I want to write it from this place value, I need to write it here. And what do I have? I've got 0 0.0801 times 10 to the negative 6. Now I can take that number, and I can go ahead and add 9 point to 1 times 10 to the negative sixth. The pl all, this is saying that all of my place values match up, right? Because this place value is the negative sixth. This place value here is also negative sixth. Everything lines up nicely. 
So let's add 10929 decimals, so I get 9.2901 times negative 6. And because I wrote it from the larger place value, I don't have to worry that it's not already in scientific notation here. So I didn't have to actually convert it again. So this would be my final answer. Okay, great. This is how you do it with uh, addition. What happens if I have a subtraction problem? Same idea, okay? This is the first number I'm writing. So in addition, you could write either one on top or bottom, right? It didn't matter. But this one, I have to be very careful. This number is coming first. I'm starting here, and I'm taking this much away. All right. So let's do the same idea as we did before. Let's write it from the larger place value, okay? So this is 7, this is 6. And if you forget to do that, it doesn't matter. As long as you know how to, uh, as long as you convert it to the, the same, it's not going to matter. Um, you just might have to convert it to scientific notation at the end. So let's do this. We'll make it everything from 10 to the 7th. So I'm going to do 6.87 times 10 to the 7th. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 4.2 times 10 to the 6th, and I want to make it into right, 10 to the 7th. Okay, well, this is telling me that this is 10 to the 6th. So what's 10 to the 7th is one bigger, so I'd have 0. So then if I'm looking at it from this place value here, I have 0 0.42 times 10 to the 7th. So this, is the, this number is the number I'm going to use here. And I'm going to line up my place values, okay? We'll move, this, we'll move this part over a little bit so that it nice lines up, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and subtract here. And I'm going to look first and say, okay, am I, can I do this, right? So I can do 6 minus 0, 8 minus 4, 7 minus 2. Okay, these top numbers all have enough. They don't have to worry about any borrowing. So 7 minus 2 is 5. 8 minus 4 is 4. Decimal point, 6 minus 6, 0 is 6. So I get 6.45 times 10 to the 7th. Okay. Let's try one more. Okay, maybe you should try pausing the video and you try doing it and then uh, we can uh, follow along at the end. Go. All right, so now we have another one. We have 2.16 times 10 to the negative fourth, okay? All right, this is the larger place value, right? Negative four is actually bigger than negative six. So I'm gonna take 7.2 times 10 to the negative six, and then I'm gonna convert it to negative fourth. Well, this is 10 to the negative six, 10 to the negative fifth, 10 to the negative fourth, so I have zero and zero. So then if I wanna say times 10 to the negative fourth, I'm gonna have 0 0.072. So 0 0.072. 7, 2 times 10 to the negative fourth. Well, I don't have a number in here, so I'm going to have to make sure I put a zero in. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and subtract. Okay. Well, let's see. Zero minus, I can't do that. Right. Zero minus two. That doesn't work. So I'm going to have to borrow. So I'm going to borrow from this six. Well, that's not going to work because I have six minus seven. That's too low also. All right. So I'm going to borrow from the one. Well, can I do one? Yep, that works. So let's borrow from the one, right? And I'm going to make zero. And this idea of borrowing, again, is looking at that place value, right? I'm saying, okay, there's one here. That makes 16 of these, right? Which is sort of what it was saying anyway. Then I have to borrow one from here. So then I'm going to borrow this. This becomes 15. And this becomes 10. Okay? And re Or you could look at it saying this is 160 minus 72. The same idea. Okay, so let's see. 10 minus 2 is 8. 15 minus 7, 8. 0 minus 0 is 0. 2 minus 0 is 2. And there we have it. Okay, and let's add it back up. 8 plus 2 is 0. That works. And then I carry a 1. So 8 plus 1 is 9. 9 plus 7 16. That works. I had 16, right? 6 plus the 1. Carry it. And then I get my answer. Okay, so then I end up with 10 point or 2.088 times 10 to the negative fourth. And there's my answer. Okay. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense to you. We'll do some more practice in class.